Sydney, Australia is a vibrant city known for its stunning harbour, iconic landmarks and rich cultural diversity. Nestled along the southeastern coast, Sydney offers a unique blend of natural beauty and urban sophistication, with the sparkling Sydney Harbour at its heart, showcasing the world-famous Sydney Opera House and the Sydney Harbour Bridge. As Australia's largest and oldest city, Sydney boasts a fascinating history, from its indigenous heritage to its colonial beginnings and growth into a bustling metropolis. Beyond the cityscape, Sydney is surrounded by stunning beaches, lush national parks and serene waterways, making it a paradise for outdoor enthusiasts. From exploring the bustling markets of the rocks to enjoying the surf at Bondi Beach, Sydney offers an unforgettable experience with a warm cosmopolitan vibe. Trudy Jeanette Adams was born on the 19th of September 1959 to Charles and Connie Adams. Trudy grew up in the Northern Beaches district of Sydney, known to locals as the quote, inner peninsula, due to the fact the place is noticeably very different when compared to the rest of the city. The area stretches southward to the entrance of Port Jackson in Sydney Harbour, westward to Middle Harbour, and northward to the mouth of Broken Bay. By 1978, Trudy was training to become a secretary and dreamed of travelling the world. She was also excited about planning for an August trip to Bali with her friends. It was the 24th of June 1978 and 18 year old Trudy prepared to attend a party at the Newport Surf Lifesaving Club located approximately two kilometres north of the town of Newport. She requested that her mother Connie stay up until she returned home that night. However, as the clock chimed in the 25th of June, Trudy was nowhere to be seen. Her family subsequently reported her as missing to the Mona Vale police. Police began their investigation into the 18-year-old's disappearance. Speaking with Trudy's ex-boyfriend, 22-year-old Stephen Norris, it was apparent that he was the last person to see her alive. At the party, the former couple had engaged in a heated argument. Trudy then told Norris that she was going to hitchhike home to her parents' house, which was just a five-minute drive away. This was not an uncommon occurrence, and many people in the area hitchhiked often. Shortly after midnight, at approximately 12.40am, Stephen Norris witnessed Trudy Adams going into a van on Baron Joey Road in Newport. Police originally thought that Trudy had entered a green combi van, however Norris insisted that the vehicle was in fact a light-coloured 1977 Holden delivery van. This would be the last time anybody saw Trudy Adams alive. Suspicion initially fell on Stephen Norris, having not been only her former boyfriend, but also having admitted that the pair had had an argument that night. Police questioned Norris and subsequently cleared him of having had any involvement in Trudy's vanishing. Police then began investigating the possibility that the drug scene had something to do with her disappearance. A 20,000 Australian dollar reward was offered by the New South Wales government for anyone who had any information regarding Trudy's whereabouts. The reward was then increased to $50,000. In a chilling twist in the tale, Connie Adams received a quote, haunting phone call, five days after her daughter's disappearance. The male voice on the line stated, quote, Trudy is dead. You will find her about halfway up Mona Vale Road. It was an accident. An exact copy of this call was also made to the Mona Vale Police Department. Despite extensive searches in and around the area over a span of 400 square kilometres, no trace of Trudy was found. Police also searched in the thick bushland of Kuringai Chase National Park after Trudy's disappearance. 
In the aftermath, several young women reported incidents of abduction and violent sexual assault within the same national park. These attacks, involving victims between the ages of 14 and 20, took place between 1971 and 1978. The Australian Women's Weekly reported in a hitchhiking article in their 16th of August 1978 issue, quote, Police have learned of two men who have abducted, assaulted and raped nine young women in the area after offering them lifts home since last October. The men search their victim's handbag for her name and address. Then, threatening her with a gun, they drive her home. They say they know where she lives, who she is and threaten reprisals against her and her family if she reports them to the police. The article also stated that the traumas these women and girls experienced, quote, are too humiliating to be printed. Detectives have since identified strong connections between these assaults and the case of Trudy's disappearance. The case sadly went cold and the mystery caller was never identified. The case was then reopened in 1992, as police took a look at the green combi van with a set of fresh eyes. However, unfortunately, nothing notable came from this. Detective Superintendent Beresford of Mona Vale Police stated in 2008, following the reward having been increased to 250,000 Australian dollars, quote, It is our belief she was kidnapped by two males and murdered. He further commented, quote, As a result of our inquiries, we believe Trudy's abduction was sexually motivated. Furthermore, we suspect there are more victims of these two sexual predators who have not previously come forward to police. Support is available to these women, who we are encouraging to contact Strike Force Keldy detectives. Their information, despite the passage of time, might be crucial to helping us charge those responsible in this case. In 2009, one of the individuals who committed the sexual assaults on the women and girls between 1971 and 1978 was publicly identified as Neville Brian Tween, also known as John Anderson. He was considered the prime suspect in the Trudy Adams case and was a convicted sex offender and drug dealer who was the suspect for at least 14 rapes. In 2018, Trudy's disappearance became the subject of a three-part documentary, Baron Joey Road, and furthermore, ABC's Unravel podcast. Journalist Ruby Jones and former Today Tonight host Neil Mercer discuss the case in detail and, during their investigations, uncover events from the seedy underworld of Sydney in the 1970s. Ruby stated that she and fellow host Neil were given crucial information about the case, which hadn't been made public before. They theorised that Trudy had somehow become involved in the drug world, possibly smuggling drugs between Sydney and Bali, and that her disappearance was due to a drug run gone wrong. Ruby Jones stated to New Idea, quote, There was a dark side to the northern beaches at the time. There was a drug trade going on, where people were bringing drugs back through Bali. Trudy's friends, Leanne Weir and Anita Starkey, however, disagree with this theory and do not believe she was involved in the drug trade. Looking at the prime suspect, Neville Tween, it became apparent in police records that he had been picked out of a lineup by several of his victims. However, for reasons unknown, he was never questioned about the assaults or the disappearance of Trudy. At the time of the Unravel podcast's recording, Tween was serving an 18-year sentence behind bars for having sexually assaulted a young man who was selling drugs. When he was booked into jail, he was found with fake beards, guns and several disguises. They collected a voice recording of Tween, who had a distinctive speech impediment, noted by several of the victims. Ruby and Neil hope that by publishing the recording, more people will come forward with information. 
Ruby spoke on the podcast with Trudy's ex-boyfriend, Stephen Norris, who explained that Connie had told police when she reported her daughter missing that he had seen her get into a green combi. However, he clarified that this information was incorrect and she had in fact entered a lightly coloured 1977 Holden delivery van. Ruby said of Norris, quote, As soon as we met him, I trusted him. I felt he was really honest with us. In Ruby and Neil's documentary, Baron Joey Road, it was found that the main suspect, Neville Tween, had a, quote, unholy and disturbingly close relationship with Mark Standen, a high-ranking and strongly influential figure in the police. According to Ruby Jones, Standen was the, quote, most senior and corrupt cops in the country. Tween served as a paid informant for Standen during his tenure at the National Crime Authority and later the Crime Commission, both agencies dedicated to investigating serious organised crime. It was also thought that Tween and Standen went on holidays together to the coast, and the latter was found to have been arrested for conspiring to illegally bring 300 kilograms of pseudofedrin into the country. He was sentenced to 22 years in prison, and argued in a handwritten letter sent to the Unravel podcast, quote, There was nothing corrupt about my relationship with Anderson. He continued, quote, I only saw him perhaps three to eight times per year, if that. The occasional dog walking or shopping centre encounters were exactly that, occasional and unplanned encounters. I suspect that you have imagined a far closer relationship, and if so, you are mistaken. I'm disappointed that you are trying to sensationalise my dealings with Anderson. It is misguided and dishonourable, especially given that I responded to all your questions in good faith and in detail. An underworld figure from Sydney's northern beaches, known as Guido, claimed that Trudy's body was disposed of at a place called Christmas Tree Hill. The ABC learned that this site was not part of the extensive 1978 search for Trudy's remains. New South Wales Police informed the ABC that both land and water searches have been carried out over the years in multiple locations within Kooringai Chase National Park and nearby areas. The Baron Joey Road team learned that Guido, now deceased, once worked at a Brookvale smash repairs shop in Brookvale, Northern Sydney, and was reportedly involved in the disposal of bodies. Gary Batt, a convicted criminal and close associate of Neville Tween, was also employed at the smash repair shop in Brookvale. This new lead was passed on to the cold case team. Reportedly, Tween, Batt and Guido are now all deceased. Sadly, Trudy's mother, Connie, passed away 11 years after her daughter's vanishing, never knowing what happened to her. At a 2011 inquest into Trudy's disappearance, it was stated by her father Charles that Connie Adams died of, quote, a broken heart. The coroner concluded that Trudy Adams likely passed away due to, quote, homicide or misadventure. Over 45 years have passed since Trudy disappeared and her loved ones continue to hold on to the hope that one day answers will be found. If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Trudy Adams and reside in Australia, you can contact Strike Force Keldy Detectives by reaching out to your local police station or calling Crime Stoppers at 1800 333 000.